So today's theme is nephrology. What's the flight plan? First, we're going to go through the functions of the kidneys. So we're going to repeat a bit from physiology. So kidney function. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go through some crucial terms that are used in nephrology and in clinics all around, that you should be clear what it is, okay? And first term is azotemia. What is azotemia? Then another term, crucial one, is uremia. And then, if we'll have enough time, but I'm sure we're gonna just touch it at least, we're gonna go through acute kidney injury. And already, I'm telling you a nerd term that should be used, acute kidney injury, which is much better term than the previous one, which was acute kidney failure. And the reason why we're not using acute kidney failure as much nowadays is because not all kidneys that are injured will fully fail. That's important. They can lose a partially function and then regain the function. They can have a hit, you know, they can get ischemic, some toxin, whatever, but not necessarily, they don't have to fail. That's important. And we're gonna divide acute kidney injury, and I'm gonna definitely maybe have time to tell you about, there are three types, and you heard about them. It's pre-renal, intra-renal, and post-renal. I don't think we'll have time to get into the actual real kidney injury, which is the intrarenal, but we're going to mention pre-renal definitely, I hope, and post-renal. And maybe we'll touch a bit the intrarenal, but this is a section for one hour at least, okay? And that's the important one, and this one we're going to do maybe next time when we meet, okay? Or you're going to get a video already on that. Well, let's repeat a bit and let's draw something. So guys, it's so easy for you. I'm sure you're able to tell me what is this? What's that? It's obvious right away. The kidney pyramid. Kidding. Whoa, that was supposed to be a joke and you totally killed it. You are right. Whoa, amazing. So that's papilla because over here we got a, what's that? This is a calyx and this is papilla. Very good. And the reason why I'm drawing this is not papilla, it's not calyx, but it's the blood perfusion, the way how the blood flows. And that's crucial. It's crucial to understand the acute kidney injury. And the way how the blood flows into the, and how it perfuses the kidneys, the blood comes from down over here, okay? Yeah. So, comes from, does anybody know? I'm going to put it like that. Let's, let's do a bifurcation over here. We can put this one here as well. So does anybody know? I'll put it in a different color. It's the interlobar artery, okay? So interlobar lobar artery. And this is just the same one, okay? And then does anybody know which is this one? Intra. Th this one. This is the arcuate artery okay and this one which goes up that's the interlobular artery okay but these are not as important as these two that i'm going to mention now 
because there's a branch and this goes into this interesting structure which is called what? That's the glomerulus. And what do you call this artery? That's the afferent. afferent. Very good, very good. That's the afferent artery. And what do you call this artery? Afferent. Very good. And we're going to talk about this more today. But the important thing why I want to stress over here to everyone, the efferent goes down, okay? It goes down. Sort of, I won't draw the veins, but you know, it like connected with veins over here, but it goes down deep into the what do you call this part? This is a border, so what is this part up over here? Medulla. Well, up, up is cortex, and here is you are right, medulla. So the efferents like really brings the blood to the medulla, okay. And moreover, look at this. This is what? The green thing. That's pretty simple for you, I guess. Nephron. Very good. Goes up and then returns. Over here touches the glomerulus. And now it makes several twists and whatever. And then it enters the collecting duct. Okay. What is important? This artery, the efferent artery, has branches, yeah, and it like makes a net of arteries around it, yeah. So, and the important thing is the flow, of course. This is the way how it flows. Okay, that's important. Okay. So this was just a anatomical recap, and tell me how many nephrons we have. What's the number? It's 900, let's say 900, till million per a kidney. So we got 2 million above, about 2 million. Do you think you all have 2 million? No. You had that when you were born. But since that, you're losing it a bit. So slowly you're losing it. But when this really speeds up, in what age? It's 40 years, remember. 40 years. There is a decrease of kidney function, okay? So you are fine now, okay, still. But remember about everyone, first of all, who's older, 70, 80 years, you know, it, the function of the kidneys is really not too good. It cannot be, because just because of the age. But moreover, remember, the 40 years of age means for totally healthy people. But people with diabetes, with hypertension, with some inherited problems like polycystic kidneys or whatever, of course, they will be already losing much more when they reach 40 years. And some of them can already have dead kidneys. It depends during your life how many coincidences you come across, how many ischemic attack, how many times you bleed, what toxins you drink, or unfortunately, what genetics you have, if the 40 years is like accounts for the majority. So it depends how your kidneys were built during the development. And only remember, if you have like diabetes since you're 15 or 10 years, if you get to 40, your kidneys are basically like 80 years old. Because they're destroyed already by the glycemia and everything. Okay? Good. So, remember this picture and we're going to come back to this. And let's get to some drugs. And I want to mention two important drugs. And one of them is non-steroidals. Like ibuprofen and all of them. And the end of the one is, and you'll tell me which one. And why am I mentioning this? Why non-steroidals? Look at here. In what relation I'm talking about non-steroidals? Why do you think? 
Of constriction. Of what? Of afferent. Very whistle. good. Very good. Very good. All of you, please remember. Okay? And I'm going to go back. So, always remember that prostaglandins... prostaglandins are the ones which are vasodilating the afferent arterial. Okay, and that is why if you block the prostaglandins, you're going to cause vasoconstriction. And what does this mean over here? This means that you will cause the whole glomerulus and the rest of the medulla ischemic. Okay? But remember, okay, I'm going to come back. Non steroidals. You have to use them sort of, you know, a lot. And typically, those kidneys have to be already, like, not working as well. So I'm talking about what? People with diabetes and hypertension or any old people, 70, 80 years old. Unfortunately, these people also have all kinds of pain. And that's why they're using ibuprofen as a part of a meal. And that's why it is so dangerous. So in old patients, please always think twice if to tell them to take ibuprofen and other non steroidals because this can be a last hit, last punch, last knockout. It's very serious. Also, please don't forget, and we're going to come this some other time, non steroidals they can work in many other ways. They're sort of, you know, hitting the, the kidneys in many other ways. One of these is this one. But you can have also allergy to non steroidals So you're going to cause acute interstitial nephritis. Or even you can destroy glomerulus. Okay. So there are many ways how non steroidals really impair kidney function. So always like it's serious. It's, it's the same like paracetamol for liver. Well, not as serious. Paracetamol is like 100%. If you take 20 pills right away, you're... you're you, you have a dead liver, but with these non steroidals, really, they should think wisely if to use them or not. So watch out. So non steroidal is dangerous for kidneys. It really can be dangerous, okay? You wouldn't expect non steroidals are so bad, but with combination with bad kidneys already, very dangerous. And the other drug I want to mention is tell me which one causes constriction of efferent arteries. Ace inhibitors, maybe. Well, which one causes constriction? You're right, but not ACE inhibitors. Angiotensin? Yes, very good, very good, very good. So angiotensin. And what happens? When you close the efferent, it means you're going to decrease the perfusion of the medulla again. You see how it flows? So you don't want vasoconstriction. And actually what they found out is that if you block the angiotensin, then you dilate the vas efferent, and this improves the life expectancy of the glomerulus of the kidneys because you decrease the pressure over here in the glomerulus and increased pressure in glomerulus is bad it destroys the glomerulus faster and you perfuse better the the medulla so remember drugs and i'm going to jump back remember drugs that are blocking the effect of angiotensin on vas efferens are actually kidney protectors. And you give these drugs to all patients with hypertension and diabetes. When the function decreases seriously, you give them this to prolong the life expectancy of the kidney. Okay, so 
Very well, very good. So remember Angio Tenzin. So Angio Tenzin is the one which causes vas efferens constriction. And that's why you will use ACE inhibitors to protect the kidneys, okay? And not only ACE inhibitors, but what else can you use? Angiotensin receptor blockers, which is losartan, for example. So if ACE are not working or you're coughing too much, you can try ARBs, okay? Yeah? So on one side, non sterols are bad, ACE inhibitors are protective. And basically, anytime you want to help someone, if someone has a serious kidney disease, you give them ACE inhibitors in most of the cases. And also you decrease the pressure in the arterial system, so it's like a bonus to it. So, questions?